Hello, how are you? My name's Emma and I'm an artist. And today's video is our last one looking at uh, using the theme of curiosity to make some artwork. Now, artists are renowned or well known for being quite curious. And some artists like to experiment with lots of different paints and different media. So pencils and pens and chalks and crayons. And they like to use them in unusual ways. Uh, to create unusual effects to make their artwork. So today, our session is all about being curious about what sort of marks we can make. And artists call this process art or mark making. And we're going to, well, I'm going to encourage you to use lots of different materials and maybe use them in ways that you haven't used them before. So I've got a few that I really like to use and um, I'll see if you like them as well. So like usual, I'm going to point my camera down in a minute so you can see what I'm doing. And you can use any combination of these or you might be able to come up with some of your own. OK, so let's have a go. So the first thing I like to do is I like to use filter papers. You might recognise this. Your grown ups might use one when they're making a cup of coffee. Yeah. It comes from a coffee machine, but they're great fun for drawing on. Look, I've drawn on lots of colourful circles here. And it's fun to spray water onto your inks once you've coloured in. You're never quite sure what's going to happen. And some artists really like that. They like the fact that you're not quite sure how it's going to turn out. Let's give it a spray. Ooh. The wetter it gets, the more the ink from the pens starts to go splodgy. Oh, we've got nice little puddles there of colour. Is it going to go drippy as well? So if we can get some nice drips going down there. Oh, yeah, look at that. So that might be one way that you experiment with your materials. See if you can use some pens and filter paper to make some spreading pictures. I'm going to give that another squirt. See how far it goes. Excellent. What else can we do? There's something else we can do which is equally messy. I'm going to put this down here to dry. In my bowl, I've got some water. I've got some red acrylic paint, or you could use poster paint. Guess what I'm going to put in? Something you wouldn't expect to put in your paint. <gasps> Some washing up liquid. What does washing up liquid make? It makes bubbles. So let's see what our bubbly paint looks like. I'm mixing it together. It smells like washing up liquid, but looks like paint. Let's put that there for in a minute. I'm going to make some bubbles by using a straw. This is the important bit. Don't suck. You need to blow some bubbles, OK? Nobody likes the taste of painty washing up liquid. Let's see if we can make bubbles. Look at that. A whole mountain of bubbles. I'm going to see if we can get some of those bubbles on the paper now. I'm going to do a bubble print. We won't know what it's like until we turn it over. I think we need some more bubbles there. Wow, that's a bubble mountain. Let's take a print of that. Cool. So I've done lots of bubble printing before. Look, these are my bubble colours coming through. You're never quite sure what shape the bubble paint is going to make. So you could have a go at doing that. What else could we do? Something else you might not know how it's going to turn out. Coat your string in lots of paint. I've got a piece of white string in here. Sorry, it's a white bowl and a piece of white string. You can't see it very well. There we go. And I'm going to cover my string in paint. Oh, it's a right old mess in here. Look at that. And I'm going to... Take some paper. I'm going to take my string. Oh, it's so sticky. It's stuck to the bowl. Look at that. Ooh. 
you put it on, make an interesting shape. Make sure your ends of your paper are sticking out. And then you can put another piece of paper on top. Here's my bubble paper. Oh, yeah, put it on top of the bubble paper. See what that's going to do. We need a book to hold it in place. And then get hold of your two ends of your string and pull it out. So the book is kind of holding the paper in place. Give it a good tug. Right, here comes the string. Out it comes. Let's see what sort of shape we've got. Oh, that's unusual, isn't it? So today you can have a go at being curious about what sort of effects you can get with your paint and your paper. What artists also like to do is to build up layers of interest. So we might get a stencil and I might decide to put a stencil across there. I'm going to use some gold paint now and a sponge. I'm going to squirt some out onto the sponge. I've got my stencil here, which is like full of circles and dots. I'm going to go right over the top of that. And what we can do, like artists, we can build up layers, layers of pattern, layers of interest. You might have done this when you were younger, might like doing it. Get a toothbrush full of paint. And then you can flick that across as well. Or you might find some interesting things to make some patterns with. Maybe some round shapes from the lids of bottles. You could add those on different sizes or a good old fashioned Q-tip, cotton wool bud. They make good paint brushes as well. So sometimes artists use brushes and pencils normally. Sometimes they can experiment and get a bit curious and use them in different ways. So today I encourage you to be as curious as you can with the art materials that you've got and try and make some wonderful abstract paintings and images that I've even got a drippy bit that's coming down there. I didn't expect that, did I? Right, have fun. I'm going to enjoy seeing all the artwork that you make. Bye bye.